The piece of work as complex as cinema is, there are many different methods of visual semiotics that can be implemented, both pre-production and post-production, to convey certain meaning. Film designers and producers have an established understanding of the paradigmatic and syntagmatic meanings of the signs they use and how to organize and present them for desired effect, and often do so with seamless production. As Professor Michael Goldberg states, we are used to sitting back in the dark and viewing a film uncritically. Indeed, most Hollywood films are constructed to render invisible the carefully constructed nature of the medium. It is this idea that sparks the curiosity to pull apart films and understand the power of their cinematic elements. I will be analyzing the area of color in cinema, as many films take advantage of the cinematic codes of color used together with costume design to signify development or change by using discordance to contrast the established idea present in the film. For a first example of how this idea works, we will take a look at how the costume design and color scheme work together to convey two different ideas of reality in the Matrix trilogy. In the Matrix, there are two contrasting ideas of the real world, the actual real world and the world created inside the Matrix. The filmmakers convey these contrasting ideas in the movie by taking advantage of subtle but deliberate alterations to the film's design, therefore disturbing the continuous motion of the established reality and splitting it into two worlds. The presentation of the two worlds uses specific color design of the sets and costumes. In the real world, everything has a slight blue tint, and the costumes of the characters are relatively light-colored and plain. This clip clearly demonstrates the idea of the real world, as the costumes of the characters are muted and used to support the t subtle blue tint of the scene. These techniques are used to present the audience with an established idea and create a basis to which contrasting ideas can be introduced for the desired effect. When Neo enters the Matrix, the alterations of the scene design can be seen. Although it seems like a post projection job to add all the green tint, it is in fact just scene modification. All the pieces in the set, the lighting, the props, as well as the costumes, are carefully color controlled to execute the scheme. Specifically, the largest dissonance can be seen in the main character's outfits. As when they are in the Matrix, they are covered head to toe in all black suits and wearing black sunglasses. These costumes specifically contrast the other costumes and signify the changing of the environment. The design of these costumes and scenes are carefully selected in order to thematically and symbolically represent the opposing worlds without confusing the audience as to what is happening on the screen. The Matrix is a great example of how simple things like color can completely change the entire feel of a movie. Continuing with the idea of how color modification and character costumes can be used to signify change, we will look at another strong example seen in the film Django Unchained. The style of this movie is that of a gritty western, taking advantage of a darker, reddish-brown, and woody color scheme of the sets and costumes to convey the era and feel of the film. In the scene I'm going to be analyzing, Dr. Schultz presents Django with the choice of picking his clothes for the journey to the plantation Candyland, where they are going to collect the bounty on the Brittle Brothers. At this point in the film, this is the first instance in Django's life where he has had the ability to make a choice of what he wants to do. Tarantino uses the situation of the scene as an opportunity to take advantage of color contrasts with modification of the outfit to further convey this idea. When Django is next shown in the scene, he's wearing a very extravagant all blue head to toe suit with fancy black shoes and long white stockings. This costume's contrast to the rest of the film is what develops the idea that this is Django's first instance of making his own decisions. From this point on in the film, Django is a free man, and is recognized as such in this scene as the slaves and owners are confused by his extremely radical outfit. No slave would have ever had the chance to wear this costume, and I doubt any men of the time actually would. This discordance amongst the established setting of the film is what highlights the developments of the uniqueness in Django's character and establishes an idea of dissonance between Django and the other main characters in the movie. In my opinion, this idea of how color manipulation can be used to convey a development can be best visualized in Luke Skywalker's character. In the first two movies of the Star Wars trilogy, Luke's costumes have an established design with minimal dynamics. In A New Hope, the costume that Luke is wearing is very light, tattered, and simple. It is used to establish the role of Luke as a simple farm boy, similar to his father Anakin, who is also present in a similar costume. Luke's costume remains the same throughout the film, and he only makes two slight changes. One to his stormtrooper outfit, and one to his pilot outfit. 
Similarly in The Empire Strikes Back, Luke wears the same pilot outfit, a light and green and tan outfit when training with Yoda, and another completely tan outfit when at Cloud City. Another main feature of Luke's costume that takes advantage of color is his lightsaber. Luke uses Anakin's old blue lightsaber throughout the first two films, connecting him symbolically to his once Jedi father and also relating him to his master Obi-Wan Kenobi who uses a similar blue lightsaber. The costume design and color scheme for Luke's character is very static through the first two films, even though he goes through a great deal of change, both mentally and physically. It is not until the third film where his design sees a major alteration. In Return of the Jedi, which, from which this clip is from, we can see that Luke is now wearing an entirely black outfit and is using a new green lightsaber. These drastic changes in color of the costume design highlight the major conflicts confronting the character. After facing the realization that Darth Vader is his father, Luke is brought to the peak of confusion, frustration, and hate, pushing him closer and closer to the razor's edge of the dark side. This conflict is represented in the drastic transition to his all-black outfit, showing his approach towards the dark side and growing connection to Darth Vader. This technique can be viewed as a literary trope, as black is a color typically used to represent an evil character or the antagonist of the story. Many film scholars have studied this idea, such as Ivan Magrin Chagnolio, who states, Colors convey emotion, and they usually convey emotions in a very subtle way, but also in a semi-uncontrolled manner. Colors are undoubtedly an important aesthetic component in any artist's creation. The other main modification to the previously established conventions is Luke's new green lightsaber. Luke constructs this lightsaber after losing his old one along with his hand in the duel of Vader. In the first two films, the only colors of lightsabers shown are blue and red, so the choice to make the saber green instead of the established colors is so Luke's separation and isolation. With the deaths of Obi-Wan and Yoda, Luke is left as the last remaining Jedi in the universe. The construction of a lightsaber is the last step needing to becoming a Jedi, a step Luke needed to complete anyway, and he chooses the color to further establish himself as a new Jedi. The green blade separates him from his master Obi-Wan, highlighting his character development and maturity as he is a finely confident solo protagonist, and perhaps more importantly dissolves the connection between him and Anakin. This is a great example because two ex instances of color are being used to change the established scene, but they are used in opposite ways. One element's alteration conveys heightened conflict, confusion, control loss, and presence of evil, whereas the other element is modified to highlight the change in confidence, independence, and maturity of the character.